The results of a months long investigation on the impact of the Flint water crisis were released this afternoon. The probe began as a search for answers after residents of Flint began experiencing rashes and hair loss. Paula Tutman has a breakdown of the results. Here's a picture that simply can't be ignored. As you come into the city of Flint proper from I-75, the first thing you hit is a park and there are children playing in this park on a beautiful, bright, sunny day. And even with that, there is still a cloud hanging over their heads. They are a group of teenagers having fun, sort of. No! That's the face! Beneath the smiles and the laughter, there's a real concern for what the future holds for these young people. And it has nothing to do with grades, finances, or what they want to do when they grow up. It has everything to do with the water they drink and bathed in as they were growing up. When we noticed that the water had switched, my face would start breaking out like it would get bumps easier and stuff like that. This afternoon, a panel of experts discussing their findings on behalf of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, weighing in on the complaints that people in Flint who consumed and used the lead contaminated water have been suffering from a rash of rashes, skin disorders and hair loss. Some people still have rashes. Lots of numbers, lots of research, lots of data, lots of challenges in finding information. Start with an already present prevalence of skin complaints prior to April of 2000. 2014, when the city of Flint switched water sources to the Flint River, and then the prevalence of skin complaints as a control from pick a city, any city, anywhere in the U.S. Close to 20% had a diagnosis definitely unrelated to the Flint municipal water exposure. Almost 44% had dermatitis possibly related. 22% found to have non-dermatitis skin conditions possibly related to that water exposure. And 14% diagnosed with a resolved or inactive rash possibly related to that water exposure. But here's that watershed moment. The skin conditions and hair loss were not found to be likely caused by the lead contaminated water, but likely the switchover and the impact balance of chemical compounds in the water as the municipality switched back and forth between Lake Huron to the Flint River and back to Lake Huron again. We don't know that there is evidence that lead causes skin and hair loss, but what traveled along with the change in the water system? So it was likely caused by the switchover? By factors that were in the water that were associated with the switchover. For those suffering from the rashes and suffering still, there is little comfort knowing it's not the lead because there are still so many unknowns. It's, it's hard because, you know, like we got, we got diff, or we got, um, it's just hard to see the people struggle. It can be an effect with our 14-year-olds. By the time they're 18 and get ready to go to college, they're learning. It could be a learning disorder there. Paula Tutman, Local 4.